Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to the LCC podcast. We're titling this Conversations for Life. I think we're on episode number 16. Man, guys, we are just plowing through these episodes. I'm having a wonderful time diving into God's word. Um, Today, it's just you and me. We're going to have a solo podcast today, but um, I just really have a blessing on my heart that I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, Before we dive into the scripture, let's um, just invite God's presence into this. Dear Lord, we thank you for your everlasting love. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that illuminates the scriptures, God. We ask that you would meet us here in this time. Give us a divine uh, impartation of your spirit through your word. God, help us to apply this to our life so that we can um, go forward on this journey of faith and, and where we can gather nuggets of wisdom, God, that are hidden inside of your word. Um, we thank you for the listeners that are tuning in, Lord. We pray that you would uh, be able to pierce their heart during this time and they would be able to um, s- set aside a moment for you, God, that they would learn something of you. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Um, today, I wanted to cover a short little passage, but it is related to a couple other things. So um, just to give you some context, uh, we were reading on in our staff meeting that we have here at LCC. Um, we have a devotional time at the, f- at the top of every meeting that we do. Um, and it's, it's such a great time, by the way, to um, start something that would seem like a business, you know, as usual kind of a meeting. But uh, just to invite the word of God into that is always a great thing to do. Um, and so I'm really thankful for that, that I can be a part of that. And um, somebody had brought the word and it was Joshua, um, the first chapter. And I'm going to read, if you guys are reading with me, Joshua 1, 5, and I'm going to go through a couple of the verses here. But um, this is really a, a bigger thing before I start reading. Like the story of, of, of Joshua is just such an amazing testimony um, to us as leaders, right? And I believe that if you are... Um, a Christian, and and you've called Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that he's calling you into a leadership. It's just, maybe it's just over your own life, um, or maybe it's actually with people who are under you. But I believe that the Lord has given us authority in Jesus' name. And so that's why I feel like this book, um, the book of Joshua, is a great thing to read for anyone who's um, in ministry or out of ministry. So let's just read along with me. I'm in the ESV version. So Joshua 1, 5 says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I walked with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. And I wanted to stop there because um, you have to remember that in this portion, this is the beginning of the book of Joshua, and Moses has just passed away. He was leading the Israelites into the promised land, right? This is, you know, I'm sure maybe if you were a kid, I remember as, as a kid, I was watching the, the, the veggie tales (laughs) skits on this, but, um, yeah, so this is basically God is, is speaking with Joshua because Joshua is being raised up to be the leader of the Israelites, um, in, in this time. And I'm sure that, you know, if you guys know the story, Moses is, was this great leader that God had chosen, right? He went up to the to the mountain. Uh, he was delivered the stone tablets, right? He was the first one to have like the written law. Um, there were so many uh, great things. He had miracles, right? The water from the rock, um, all these things, right? And Joshua is under his leadership during this. And so um, I would imagine that after the passing of Moses, Joshua is probably feeling like there's some big boots to fill, right? These are some big shoes to walk in. And so God is just giving him uh, encouragement here in the beginning as he's embarking on this journey of being a leader, because um, I know just personally that that can feel really intimidating, right? Walking into something and somebody actually calling you a leader, right? I know personally um, in my life, I, I, I know right now I'm kind of all over the place in the, in the church, but officially I'm the the leader of the environment, which is also the the setup team, because right now we're a temporary church. And so um, I had been helping out with that for a little while, but they had actually like wanted to establish a leader 
in that space. And so they had kind of called me as the leader. And that was a little bit intimidating because I hadn't really been like a leader in any of the ministries or anything. And so um, being given that title was really intimidating at first. I was kind of feeling like, uh, like almost like the title wasn't really fitting what I felt in my heart. And so I kind of struggled with, with God a little bit because I was like, I'm, I'm just some guy, you know, like I don't really know what to do, but, um, this passage really spoke to me because he was saying, I will be with you just as I was with Moses, right? I will not leave you or forsake you. This is our everlasting God speaking to us right here. And if we keep going to verse six, it says, be strong and courageous for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Now, verse six is is really important, too, because he's bringing up not only am I not going to leave you in verse five, he's saying, I'm going to be with you just like Moses. Right. He's saying, be strong. Right. Be strengthened. Have be encouraged for you are going to cause the people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers. What he's saying is the purpose that I have given in you, right? My will is going to be done. The will that is done through you is bigger than you, which means it kind of takes a weight off of me reminding myself of this, that when I'm in a leadership role or I'm, um, you know, to do doing things for ministry, right? I know we say that kind of like as a term, it's really doing the will of God, right? Having the will of God instilled in me and just performing what God wants to do. And, and that, that kind of frees me because then I'm thinking it's not about me, right? And I think that's really the big pr- perspective shift here that um, God, God is trying to press in on Joshua. He's saying Moses wasn't God, right? This is a big deal because God was with Moses, right? But Moses had the same access that, that Joshua had. What he's saying was the leadership that God had put on Moses isn't necessarily meaning God is with Moses and then the other people are, are following. It's more like we are all have access to this same God. And God has put Moses in a position to lead the people here. But God's will has preeminence, right? It means that he's going to do it no matter what. This is bigger than us. Um, and so that just really encouraged us. And, and I know like, like sometimes in life we, we can feel like that's a burden, right? Like being a leader is a burden we have to carry because we almost feel like we have the relationship that we have individually with God, but then it's almost like we have to, um, re- relate to God for other people. Right. Cause it, it can feel like that. Um, and, and like I said, we had that culture of, um, I can give you guys an example, right? So we have this, this culture of the devotional, that we give. Right. And we've kind of carried that down from the staff meeting. It goes all the way from there to even any time that our ministries meet. Right. And so, um, for us right now, the the setup team is meeting on Saturday mornings. Um, and we usually would just jump right in, right. 10 AM we're at the school, we're all meeting up and we're just, we have one thing on our minds setting up that church. Right. But, um, the, the real focus here got God really like impacted my heart when, when we went through this, because we had this whole transformation. We were like, we want the presence of God to be the focus of everything that we do. And if we do that, it has to come first. And so what we decided was as a team, right? I had made this decision um, to have a prayer right before we start setting up the church. And, um, you'd be surprised at, at how difficult that was to start. Um, it wasn't really because we had apprehension from the people. It was more, uh, it, it was more of just like a personal thing, right? Like getting there. Cause that means that now if we are going to pray together, we all have to be there at the same time. Right. So sometimes inviting God to be first in something means that we have to also prepare beforehand. Right. And this is one thing that I love about, about doing things God's way is when you, when you do things and you prepare, then the rest of it is up to him. And that's why, um, it's been such an amazing thing. And so I think, um, just just like carrying out that example. So when we had, when we had met the first time, it was a little awkward, right? Meeting up together because we were all probably having, you know, we're all coming off of Saturday morning. We're thinking like a hundred things and we're already thinking about the weekend, about Sunday. There's probably extra things we have to set up that week. And then we have to come in and all together, we have to focus 
our, 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 all of our attention on, on Jesus Christ. And so I think that was a little bit awkward at first, but I think once we started to do it, um, it, it just totally radically changed, uh, the relationship that we had with what we're doing, right. The actual thing that we're doing with our hands, like setting up chairs and technology and, and whatever else, but it also, uh, it also transformed the relationship that we had with one another, right. It was reminding me of how it says in acts, right. They were of, of one accord, right. They had everything in common. That's the way it felt when we invited Jesus Christ into what we do. Um, and so I think that was what the call was that, that God was giving to Joshua here. Um, it was basically a, a, like, take your eyes off of what the leadership is as a position and focus yourself more on what the bigger purpose that I have instilled in you. Right. And so like for me, that's right now as the, the setup leader, the bigger purpose that he's put in me is ensuring that the building, right, it changes it's it, it's um it's title right it goes from a school to being a place of worship right and i, I i've kind of went through that like in in my mind because um when we get there right like a we just for context right for the listeners we we meet in a in a, in a high school right and this building is you know it's like your typical building it's been updated it was recently built um and so there's a gym and we meet in there and it's almost like if if you come in there um when it hasn't been set up, you know, for, for, for church, the atmosphere is different, right? You walk in there and you, you can almost feel the tension in the air because you're entering into a worldly place, right? And so this, this, um, this act of setting up the church is almost like an act of preparation for what's going to go on in here, right? It reminds me of kind of like the Israelites when they would, um, when they were in, in the wilderness, they were setting up the tabernacle, right? They were setting up the temple. It was like a, a temporary thing. And they would probably get to certain areas that were unfamiliar and they'd feel like, um, they would probably feel that, that same tension that I was feeling when I would go inside of the school and like, you know, cause we, we don't really know like what happens during the week in the school, but, but we know that we, we, as people who are Christ followers, we're bringing his presence into that room. And so I think, um, as as a as a, a a tip for you guys, like if you're doing something, f- like in your life, right? Or just a, a quick reminder that you can set the um, the expectation that you're bringing the the spirit of God with you where you go. And so when we meet as a setup team, right, where we're bringing the spirit of God into the room, and so that gym becomes a church, right? That stage becomes a place of worship right and so this is like this is just such a a profound thing when you really get into the spiritual aspect of um our 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 purpose with god um and so i I wanted to continue this because if you if you read on with me it's really amazing in verse seven it says only be strong and very courageous being careful to do according to all the law that moses my servant commanded you do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. In verse 8, it says, the, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Now, what, what is this part really saying here? It's, it's saying that apart from, right, we can just recap from verse five, he's saying, I will be with you just like I was with Moses, right? So he's saying, don't put your faith in, in the leaders that were before you. Put your faith in the God that has instilled the purpose inside of you and his will is being carried out through you. That's verse, verse five. And verse six is saying, be strong and courageous. So it's saying, let that encourage you. Let that strengthen you that this is not just something that I have to pick up where somebody else left off. This is something where God has already instilled this in you. And then he reaffirms it again, only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law that Moses had my servant commanded you. Now he's saying, um, pick up right you, you yourself in purpose. Realize that this thing is bigger than you, and then also remember the things that the leaders before you had said. 
right? So it's not like you're you're filling the same position, but imagine all the all the times that you've had somebody over you in your life, right? And there's been things like little nuggets of wisdom that they've given you, or maybe there's there's things that they've taught you how to do. Um, and he's saying like, don't forsake those, right? So it's it's saying the purpose is bigger than you, right? But God has given us people in our life, and so I think. Um, that's another great thing for people. Like I know I'm relating it back to me and the, in the setup team, but, um, this was kind of a new thing for our church, but I know that there were just, there's still principles that, that apply that I learned from leaders before that I could just, you know, pick up and use in certain scenarios. Um, I know that the one big thing for me right now is the setup team is kind of one of the, one of the biggest ministries in terms of people, right? Because we have a lot of people that, that come out to set up. It's, it's an amazing ministry to be a part of. Um, I, I think right now we're hovering around 15 to 20 people um, and we rotate them. So it's probably about, I'd say it's about five to six people per team that we rotate. Um, and so, you know, that's a lot of um, communication. That's a lot of uh, inner interpersonal relationships. And so I think a lot of the stuff that I've gathered from the other leaders has been related to uh, personal relationships with people, right? How do you interact with people who are serving? How do you, um, how do you continue to go towards a certain goal, but also consider the needs and, and, um, the certain strategies that would help the people as a whole, right? Because when, um, when you have a, a, a team, right, you're not really pulling everybody. It, you're actually more gathering together and all walking in the same direction, Right. And so I think God was explaining that to to Joshua here when he was saying that he was like, according to all the law that that the Moses, my service has commanded you. He's saying, don't turn away from the things that Moses had, had taught you. Right. He's saying, go forward with that and you will have success. Right. So he's saying that the things that I have instilled in Moses are successful. Right. And so we're we're going really deep in this, but I wanted to really just bring that up for you that like in your life right now, even if you feel like I'm not a leader, I'm just maybe you just gave your life to Jesus and you're just coming to a church or maybe um, maybe you've been in, in ministry before, but you're not really in necessarily a leadership position. Remember that God has given you a uh, reign over your life. Right. You are a leader of your life in in its entirety. And so when God is giving us these things, right? He wrote this in his word. And so we know it's, it's, it's for us. Um, he's saying to you that you, you, you can be encouraged and strengthened knowing that the people who have instilled things in you are, can be profitable, right? Like test it with God's word, but they can, they can be something that that's going to benefit you in, in this life. Um, and he's also telling you the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. The book of the law is just a fancy word for the things that I, that God has written down for us in this life. Um, at that time in the Old Testament, the book of the law meant um, it was it was you know the the Ten Commandments. It was the scriptures. It was the Torah. They had um, the scrolls that were written down that were basically the prophets were receiving the word from the Lord and they were writing things down. And so he was telling Joshua, like, don't forsake this, the things that I've given you in written form. Um, let's move on to verse nine. So verse nine says, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord. Your God is with you wherever you go. He's just reinstating this again. He's saying, have I not already told you this? Like, he's just like making sure that it's really clear. Um, and then it says, um, if we move down, right, we're on the, on the next passage here. It says, Joshua assumes command in, in my Bible. And it says, um, verse 11, pass through, this, this is Joshua talking, by the way. It says, Joshua commanded, this is verse 10 and 11, um, Joshua commanded the officers of the people, pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, prepare your provisions for within three days you are to pass over this Jordan to go take into possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And so this is him finally taking all of this encouragement, right, from the word of, of God and, and directly from him because he spoke to him. And he's saying, now he's talking with the people, right? So he's getting hyped up, right? Now he's ready to go deliver this to the people of Israel. And he's saying, 
pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, prepare your provisions. He's saying, let's get ready. Take your tools. Get ready to do God's work. And he's saying, within three days, you are to pass over the Jordan to go take possession of the land that God has given you to possess. Now he's, in layman's terms, what he's saying is, put take together your tools, right? Gather your gifts, right? Realize what God has given you and let's do what God has wants us to do, right? Let's do God's will. And so um, maybe today you're, you're feeling discouraged. Maybe you feel like you don't really know what your calling is, right? Maybe you know that Jesus Christ dwells in you, um, but you feel like you haven't found that area where God wants you to serve. I would encourage you to seek God in, in his word, Ask him, really dwell with him, and he, and he's going to make your path straight. I guarantee it. He's going to tell you what you need to do, and you're going to feel like this in your life. You're going to feel like after that, after that, that that session you've had with God, or maybe there's a season that you've been with God, um, there there will be a time where he's going to say you're going to say to yourself or the people you know in your family, prepare your possessions because we're going to go do what God's will wants in our life. Right. I know for me right now, um, it's really clear to me that that the will I have is to stay where I am. God is 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 really um, working on on me as a as a leader in this setup team. Um, as you know, if you guys already know me, I'm also serving in the worship ministry um, and, and, and plenty of other things. But I know that the Lord is 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 is, is working on me as a leader. Right. And I know that there's days where I feel like maybe it, it feels like too big of a position to fill. And other days it might feel like I'm going the wrong direction. But I know that if I keep my faith in the one who has the will for my life, I know that he's going to be the one that remains faithful. And so that means that he's going to guide me and lead me. Um, the last thing that I wanted to do before this was I wanted to make a connection to Jesus Christ. Because when you think about it, when Jesus Christ was crucified, right, we can move into the New Testament, right? We can apply this even more directly to our life. Um, Jesus was, was crucified and he, he left the earth. And if you guys read, I'm going to turn there real quick, but um, the disciples, they kind of just went back to doing what they always did. Right. They were they were fishermen, some were tax collectors, some were other things, but they essentially were just like, well, he's gone. Let's pack it up, <laughs> even though he had just explained to them throughout all this. The the Gospels, you can read this. He's telling all of them that he's going to be back. He's going to resurrect from the dead. Right. He's going to meet them again. But they, you know, it's so quick and easy for their faith to to run cold, right? When they actually watch their savior get crucified. But, um, the amazing part was, right. They were putting, they might've been putting their faith just in the man of Jesus. But when he resurrected and came back, he, he was he basically saying what the same thing that God was saying to Joshua. And we're going to read it here. Let me just find the, the verse. It was, um, I was going through the Gospels and reading because um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all have different uh, accounts of this. But I love what it, what it says here. In uh, It's in Luke, right? We're going to be in Luke 24. And let me see. So it'd be, let's just read from verse 36. And it says, as they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said, peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they'd saw a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do you doubt? Why does doubt arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still in disbelief, they were marveling. And he said to them, have you anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of fish and he took it and ate it before them. This is the first part of this, right? He had just come back and they were like shocked. They didn't even believe that he was fully resurrected, right? It said that, that they thought they'd seen a spirit, right? So what they were really saying was they didn't believe that it was he had truly resurrected from the dead. And so their test for that was to feed him a fish. They're like, all right, well, if he's a real person, he would want to eat this fish. <laughs> but if we move on to verse 44, it says, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, 
that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. This is so important. What he's saying to you, what he's saying to the disciples, right? And he's also saying to us is the words that he spoke to us when he was still with us, written about me in the law of the of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled, which means the purpose of God will be fulfilled. The God's will will be done. This means that we're not going to stop it. We can't stop it. We can't change it, right? The purpose is bigger than us. This is the whole point of what I was trying to say. So Jesus is coming back to the disciples. First, he's like, why, you know, he was first kind of like surprised at, at how little their faith was when he, when, when he came back to them and they were already in disbelief, right? That he would have resurrected. But then the next thing he was saying was that his, his words were with him. So he's saying, I had already explained this to you, that, the, that God's will is going to be done through me no matter what right? I'm coming back as a proof that the the prophecies in the law of Moses are going to be fulfilled, right? And then look at what it says after this in verse 45. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and verse 46, and he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer on the third day and rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. He's explaining the the purpose of of Jesus dying on the cross. Verse 48, you are witnesses of these things and behold, this is verse 49, I'm sending you, I'm sending the promise of my father upon you, but, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So what he's saying here is is just like what he said in in Joshua, right? After he had said like I haven't left you, right? I'm still with you. Be strong and courageous, right? These are the things that he said here. After that, he's saying you are witnesses to these things and now I am sending you I'm sending you the promise of my father. Right. This is this is also just like he said to to Joseph or uh, to, to, to to Joshua in in the Old Testament. God is saying, "I have I have a promise on your life." Right. He w- in in Joshua they were promised the the promised land. He was bringing them into uh, Canaan. Right. But in in this passage here, it's it's Jesus again. Right. Being a manifestation of God, telling the disciples that he has promised them forgiveness of sin, a new life and power to live in this life. And so I think we can apply this directly to our life here. Right. I know sometimes reading the Old Testament, it can be hard to make the connections to how this really applies. Right. It might sound like, oh, it was a nice story. You know, God told Joseph, yeah, that's great for him. But how does this work for me? Right. It, it does because God is so consistent in his word. He teaches us so many things throughout um, throughout all of the, the, the whole scripture. Right. Not just the Old Testament and not just the new. He relates them together. And so that's really what I wanted to explain here was that Jesus Christ was delivering the same promise, right, that that Joshua had way back when he was giving the same thing to the, the, the disciples. And so get that that's really the whole the whole thing of what I wanted to share, guys. I pray that you guys were blessed today. Um, I just really wanted to, to share my heart and um, how I relate to the story of, of Joshua and how um, God's promise right? God's promise will not return void in your life. If you, if you don't know him, I would, I would pray right now that you would, you would really start to see um, how God is after your heart. Jesus Christ died for you. His life can, can be um, awakened inside of you. It only just takes a recognition that you needed a savior and then believing on the fact that Jesus gave his life so that you could be saved. It's the best decision you can make. And I think for the for the people who have already accepted Jesus Christ, it's amazing just to recognize again each day that the promise of Jesus Christ dying on the cross is not just something that uh, what one event that happened. It, it's, a, it's, an, uh, it's, it's an example of God's never-ending promise of being with us and dwelling with us and his promise to give us um, all of the things that he has, all the spiritual blessings that come along with that. And so I'll ask you to pray with me now. In Jesus' name, Lord, we ask that you would seal this word, 
God, through your Holy Spirit, help us to remember the things that were spoken today. Lord, I pray for the listeners as they're um, driving to work or maybe whatever they're they're doing to find time to listen to this. God, I ask that they would um, that they would recognize your promise. God, you would, they would recognize your heart for them. And Lord, I pray that uh, through this this conversation that we just had, God, that you would bring life into them, God. Breathe life through your word. Um, we ask that you would encourage them and maybe uh, in, in wherever their, their faith walk might be, God, whether they're at the beginning, in the middle, Lord, we just pray that you would um, let them come out, c- come out of this with, with something new in their mind, God. Give them a, um, a, a newfound strength. God, maybe they're, they're, they're looking for leadership, God. I pray they would lead their lives, God. Or maybe they're in ministry, and Lord, I would pray that you would um, give them your, your, uh, your divine leadership, God, just as we have given you lordship. Lord, we ask that you would bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen.